Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Um, this is a paper from the Cambridge International A-Level exam. Uh, this is the 9709 syllabus. This is Pure Mathematics Paper 1 from February, March 2020. So this is the first paper from the change or the new syllabus that started in 2020. There was quite a few changes between that and the previous papers. Okay, so uh, this is the first of those papers that was set, and let's get on with it. We have one hour and 50 minutes. I'm going to answer the questions one by one, separate video for each question, as I normally do, so that I can then classify my videos according to playlists in for this particular paper and also for the topic which that question is related to. And another thing is I'm not just going to be a, a talking mark scheme. I'm going to sometimes explain some of the concepts behind, uh, you know, the, the questions I'm answering for those people who might need that extra explanation. All right, so don't think I'm just going to just show you the mark scheme. If, you, if that's what you need, just download the mark scheme and look at it. All right, so now let's get started. Question number one it says the function f is defined by f of x equals 1 over 3x plus 2 plus x squared for x is less than negative 1. <clears throat> so that's something that's very important for us to realize. They don't give this piece of information for decoration. That will most probably have some implication in our answer. So we have to keep that in our mind from the beginning. So it says determine whether f is an increasing function, a decre decreasing function, or neither. So first of all, we have to understand what do they mean by increasing function. Now, an increasing function is basically a function that is continuously um, rising. Its gradient is always positive. All right, so if it's increasing, f dash of x will always be greater than zero. That's for increasing functions. Okay, that's for increasing functions. And f dash of x is less than zero. That's for decreasing functions, functions which the gradient is always going down. The gradient is always negative, okay? And neither means for some values it's increasing, for some values it's decreasing, okay? So a function that, for example, goes like this, continues rising, that's increasing. A function that goes like this, continues falling, that's decreasing. A function that goes like this, rises and falls uh, for different values in its domain, that's neither, okay? So we've got to determine whether this is an increasing function or a decreasing function, or neither. Increases for some values, decreases for others. Now, what tells us about the gradient of a function? Well, as I mentioned here, the gradient function. You differentiate it. If you differentiate a function, you find its gradient function. So the first step here is for us to find what f dash of x is. So let's first write this function in a manner that will help us to differentiate. Now the x squared is fine, that's written in the, in the form that we want to, we can differentiate easily, but one over three x plus two is not written in a form that is easily differentiated. So I'm going to write this as three x plus two, all to the power of minus one. This is the same thing. This is from the law of indices that something to the power of negative, we could say n is equal to one over that same base, the power of positive n. So this is like 3x plus 2. You could think of it as to the power of 1. So if you write this on the numerator, it's 3x plus 2 to the power of negative 1. And you've got plus x squared. That's already as we as you want it. So now we've got to find the, the gradient function. So I'm going to differentiate this function. Now this part of it is no problem. That's just going to become 2x. We know how to differentiate. Uh, polynomial, you just, uh, the power is a, a constant. You multiply by that constant. And then you take one from the power. So you multiply by the power. So it's 2 times 1, which is 2. So you have 2x. And then you take one from the power. So you have to the power of 1, which you don't have to write. So that's the differential of x squared. Now, how do you differentiate 3x plus 2 to the power of minus 1? Well, this is something which you have to use what's called the chain rule. Because you have a function within another function. So here you have something inside uh, you have like the main function raised to the power of minus 1, but inside it there's another function. It's like something like this, you could say. You have f of g of x. Okay, so you have a function inside the main function. Now the main function differentiates, okay, 
Um, so you, you would first of all, you differentiate this main function. So you'll have f dash of g of x. But then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. That's using the chain rule. Okay. So you differentiate the function as a whole. Okay. So you have f dash of, and you, and you keep this as it is. It's inside it after you differentiate the main function. But then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So you apply that to this. The main function is something raised to a power. It's like this bracket raised to a negative one. So we multiply by the power. Okay, and then we take one from the power. But then we, ne we need to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So we differentiate, we're multiplying by the three, three. Okay, so we multiply by the three. So that gives us our answer. We can just simplify that. So we can say f dash of x. If I, if I write this in a more kind of a friendly, uh, friendly way, that easy for us to analyze. Um, you're going to have minus 1 times 3, which is minus 3. And this we can rewrite it as a denominator as 3x plus 2 to the power of 2. We're just using the same law. Something to the power of minus n is 1 over 8, 8 to the power of n. So you've got 3x plus 2 to the power of minus 2 is the same as 1 over 3x plus 2 squared. So this is, you end up with minus 3 over that. Okay, and here you're going to have plus 2x. Plus 2x. Now, in this question, they've told us, as I mentioned, x... This function is defined for x being less than negative 1. All right. Now, if x is less than negative 1, okay, then we know that this term is going to be, in fact, it doesn't matter what x is, this term, this part is going to be positive. We know that 3x plus 2, all squared, has to be always greater than or equal to 0. All right. In fact, if x is less than minus 1, okay, then this can never... Um, become zero because this is going to be zero when x is equal to negative uh, two over three okay so it has to be less than minus one so it can't be so we can say that this is always be going to be greater than zero always okay so as x is less than minus one three x plus two squared must always be greater than zero it's always going to be positive so therefore you have minus three over 3x plus 2 squared is going to be something which is negative. It's always going to be negative, this thing. All right? This, this can't be positive. Okay? Because um, if this is, uh, you know, this is negative, this is positive. Negative over positive gives you a negative. So this must be less than 0. Okay? So therefore, it's negative. And we know that as x is less than minus 1, 2x will always be less than zero as well it's always going to be negative because two times something negative will be negative so this will also be negative so therefore negative so you can say f dash of x will equal something negative plus something negative which is negative so we can say here that f dash of x will always be less than zero therefore f of x is a decreasing function because we can see that the gradient function is always going to be less than zero. So some sort of explanation like that is required. And there we have the answer to that question. Question number one from February, March 2020. Um, this is all about differentiation and the types of function, whether increasing or decreasing. All right, so uh, in, inside here, we also had an, an example of the chain rule, okay, or differentiation by the chain rule, which is something which comes up in um, P3 in the Edexcel syllabus. So it comes up a bit earlier um, in the Cambridge syllabus. All right, so that's the end of this question. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this link over here. Other questions about differentiation in general can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And if you want to watch a video that shows you how to use my channel to look for what you to find what you're looking for easily, you can click on the link that will show over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.